you. I'm fine, and you? Good to see you. You, you, you enjoying the cruise? as well? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, great. That will be good company then. You have to get on the Mystic Nile. Oh, yeah. Of course. I thought I'll be alone here, but it's good to have company. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Mohammed, by the way. Nice to meet you, Mohammed. My name is Christoph. Christoph. You, you're here in, in Luxor living or a tourist? Yeah, you know, I'm living in Luxor since four years. Four living years. and working. Okay, what do you do in Luxor? You know, I, I work for an international big company. Oh, and great. I look after And I look after the overall management of this company. Oh, great. Is it working in tourism industry? Yes, we're working in the tourism industry. And uh, it has been a few years a bit rough, but uh, we can see now finally the light at the end of the tunnel. Great, that's a good point. Okay, let's head the, the, the Nile yes. and get moving. And with Mohammed, our captain. So Mohammed, Zayek, Assalamu alaikum. Akhbarak eh. Tamam. Zayek, you're from here, I'm not sure of Mohammed. Bar al Gharbi. Mashi, I'm going to die. Allah, you're going to die. Yalla, we're going to get out of here. Or we're going to take a cruise here. So, what is very nice to see, you see, that is. Um, an island which you actually can only uh, access in the winter. Because mm -hmm. in the winter, you know, the, 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 the level of the water uh -huh. in the Nile goes down around three, four meters. Yes. So then actually the island comes out of the water. Oh. And you can observe here some very unique um, bird races. Birds. And uh, and then you can see also that agriculture starts on the island. Suddenly you have cows oh. coming to the <laughs> islands. They actually swim from the West Bank. Uh -huh. There's a small, small area, they swim onto this island. Mm -hmm. Isn't that scene fabulous? I mean, this combination of mountain, island, and then the Nile. I think what is absolutely amazing, for if you look so, you take a, you take a cruise on the Nile, is that you have, um, you, you know, you have modern, um, a modern city, well developed with a good infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Um, and on the other side, you have what the Nile actually stands for um, since, uh, since the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it means uh, uh, it make it, um, it make it grow, it, make it, it makes the country rich, it makes the country green, it makes the country deliver food and uh, yes. to their own population. So Christoph, you, you said that you've been in, in the market of, uh, of tourism for a while now and you've been in Egypt for four years, as you said. Correctly. Uh, what makes Luxor different? I, I, you know, as, I think as a person? As a, as a I human? think the city, the city itself, I think if you look at the city, I think we should never forget that 75% of the world heritage comes from this area. Luxor, for example, we, there we have Hatshepsut, we have uh, the Valley of the Kings and the Nobles. Mm -hmm. On the other side, you have the Karnak Temple, the biggest temple ever built in mankind. Mm -hmm. You have the Luxor Temple. Yes. You can go up the Nile to get the Dendra, Philae, Abu Simbel, and, and, and many other sites. Um, uh, and that, you know, the, 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 the time of the pharaohs, because if you look at it today, we look at a temple, and the temple was built 3,000 years ago. You walk into the temple, mm. and you have a feeling it has been painted yesterday. I mean, the colors are still full of uh, uh, you're full of light. The colors are still there, etc. And then you realize that every modern civilization today has a base in this country. It has come from this country. Um, and then I think, you know, very important, the up, uh, the, you know, Luxor is a part of Upper Egypt. And I think what is extremely important for Upper Egypt is uh, the population. I mean, yes. they're uh, extremely hospitable and, uh, and I think they work since ever for, for, for tourism. Um, okay. And uh, even if you go back to the pharaohs, uh, for example, there is a direct connection or there has been a direct connection between Hatshepsut and the Karnak Temple. Um, you know, and once a year, uh, the father he traveled over the Nile and uh, for celebration, for, celebration. for celebrating for the, the Nile, exactly for harvest yes. celebration. Yes. And um, uh, uh, and I think the the, the hospitality we, we, we are observing today in Upper Egypt is clearly it's part linked of the to the heritage of the, 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 the city. Clearly of the heritage yes. and the uh, yes. you know and the cultural awareness.
so uh, have I you have you invited any of your friends or family here and what was the reaction I, you know i must say i i think abroad now all my family all my friends <laughs> and, and everybody i know abroad than me and i think they're the absolutely the uh, astonished you know yeah. i mean what they love and i think what is extremely important for example when i go back home on you know on vacation mm. Where are you from originally? I'm from Germany, Germany. But, I, but I live in France today. Okay. And um, so when you, when you travel home, I always have a, I have an issue, uh, or I have a feeling I have an issue with my eyes. You know, because when you wake oh. up in the morning, oh. when you wake up in the morning, I can't see nothing at home because it's gray, you know? Oh, and, yeah. and it oh. might be cold and it, so it's yeah. very gray. Mm -hmm. So, but when you the wake scene, up here the in the itself, morning, yes. but when you wake up here in Luxor in the morning, you have a light and, and you have it 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. You can see, yes. you can see you have a fantastic light and, and depend a little bit how the sun stands in the morning. So it depends when you wake up. You have a feeling, you know, for example, the, 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 the mountain over there where, where you find the temple Hatshepsut, sometimes you have a feeling it's further away mm -hmm. or it's closing up. You, you know, oh, it, depend, oh. it really depends on the lighting, you know, so and oh. uh, I think this is the biggest. Uh, I think this is the biggest advantage of Luxor. You know? I mean, I've, I've heard the, that the, the heritage, mm -hmm. the Nile, and that you have, uh, you know, a uh, weather. Everybody invades you for. You yeah. Know so, so somebody told me that sunset here is quite different from, from any sunset you'd see anywhere around the world. What can you say about that? Is it true? I, you know, I really believe. You know, when you look at sunrise and sunset and you look at how, you know, if you look now where we are, we're in the middle of the night. Yes. Here we have the east bank yes. where the sun goes up uh -huh. and then we have the west bank Be behind. where the sun goes down. Okay. And if we go back now that we have there the valley of the kings, uh -huh. that means the tombs of uh, Tuk and Amun and, and all the great pharaohs and leaders. Uh -huh of this uh, great country, yeah, it, it's, uh, actually, uh, uh, it's actually a fantastic um, way they build it. I mean, they, they followed the cycle of the sun. I mean, the sun is extremely important for Egypt. You know? I mean, the sun uh, you know, goes up on the, on the east bank, so it's live. Yes. It goes down behind the mountain. That's, best, that's best why we have because, most you know, of the cemeteries exactly, on the west on, bank. On the west bank. Yes. So, Therefore, I think if the sun, when you see the sun going down in the middle of the mountain, uh -huh. and then you actually realize what is the meaning behind, yes. behind this mountain and, 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 uh -huh. and, and why it has been built over there, yes, I think this sunset is absolutely unique in the world. I think we can the view of the Jebel with the green area and the Nile, well, you just can spend hours here. Yeah, and, and you never get, <laughs> and you never, <laughs> you get, never get bored. bored because yes, exactly. Every time, you know, I, I, I think I'm here now since four years. I think I've done 25 times, you know, the Feluca ride, you know, yeah. up and down the Nile. But you never get bored because you see every day you see something else, and the light is not always the same. Yes, yes. And what is the most special place you've visited in Luxor? I'm talking temples. I'm talking. Uh, any place. At the end of the day, if, if you look at the, um, uh, the, 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 I think there are two very uh, amazing places, and, and, and they have a very big part in the history. I think one is Karnak Temple. Yes, of course. And for many reasons, a, I think nine or ten pharaohs actually built this temple and added. Actually, and stuff, even it's, it's it's the most biggest. A worshiping place on the globe. Yes, exactly, and and even um, uh, 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 and even foreign emperors mm -hmm. built yes. part of Romans. Uh, Some Romans built episode. part of this uh, of this temple. And then I believe, and because this is also part of my DNA, because I believe the backbone of this entire country are women. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then you must go and Hatshepsut. see Hatshepsut that. because it's the only female pharaoh um, ever lived. Well, uh, she is, she, Hatshepsut was the first female queen to rule Egypt. She was very strong. She yeah. sent expeditions to yeah, outside Egypt. She brought, Egypt. And, you know, and she she brought went, back, uh, yes. uh, you know, weed and 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 new um, 
uh, and, and new fruits, etc. I mean, she really was revolutionizing the, the, the country. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'll tell you part, something, you know, the... I was in Hatshepsut one day and I met some uh, British girl, women and they were very proud and talking about her in a sure, proud... you know, yeah. because, <laughs> because I think that's the only temple in entire Egypt who, who puts uh, you know, the role of women mm -hmm. in, the, in the past and in the modern life in the right place. Mm -hmm. How about people here? Have you been ever invited to some of the natives living here. Yeah, sure. Try I mean, the food you know, I have, you know, I love Egyptian food, and um, seriously, uh, I really love Egyptian food. Oh. So why? Because I think the Egyptian food is really, it's really very refined cuisine, mm. if it's done in the proper way. Uh -huh. So I've been invited to to some of my friends' places, etc. And what and do you the, like for Egyptian? In Egyptian I like food? meze. I like meze, and uh, what I like is. Uh, they, for example, if you if you yeah. if you go for the traditional Upper Egypt cooking, yes. for example, you go for tahina cooking, tahina, tajin, cooking. Ta yeah, so yes. they they don't use any oil or butter. No. So that, it's that means it's actually it's actually more healthy. healthy. It's the most healthy food exactly. you can get. Come and join, Mohammed. Yeah, sure. Come and have a look. Yeah. Look at this view. Oops, I was going to fall. <laughs> look at this view. Oh, it looks like Titanic, yeah. but I would need more <laughs> fancy oh, one with me. We should, we should start singing all day. You, know, you don't have the right music oh, at the moment. You know, look so. at these birds flying yeah. together. Oh, great. And I think this is what is, you know, what is so it, it, mystic about the Nile. You know, so, I mean. Yes. Uh, and over there, you know, you know, you can't see it now, a little bit in the fog over there. There is a bridge which actually links the East Bank to the West Bank. There is a bridge over there? There's a bridge over there. You know, so oh. they actually can, you can actually go by bus, car, oh, etc. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. actually go over to oh, the, so the West Bank. So we cross over this bridge so to you go, go over so to you, the Hatshepsut Temple. Exactly. So you go exactly. through the entire city of Luxor. Yeah. And then you cross the bridge. But, but it's but foggy, it, we can see it clearly now. Yeah. Ah, right. now you can see it. Now you yeah. can see it. Can yeah. Now you can see it. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, is there a deck there? Yeah, a you dock? know, this is you know the docking station docking where you have a. Because what I think everybody prefers is to take a boat yeah, to cross the Nile right. and take on the other side, take yes. a taxi. You know. So. Yes. So you have a you have a how do you call it in English? You have a navette, a shuttle, uh -huh. a ferry boat. It's a, a ferry, ferry actually. You know. Yes. So, so the ferry goes uh, yes. every ten minutes. Yeah. Crosses. Um, why don't you come over that? here, <laughs> in case you want to fall? <laughs> <laughs> so, this is what you can see. This yeah. is what you can see. You see? Yeah. So, uh, this is what the people use today, you know, all yeah. the time. You know, so. Which is nicer. I think it's always nicer to cross the Nile um, it, by boat instead of going by car. You know, I mean. mm -hmm. see, it's better for the what, environment. What? Better for the environment yes, too. Yes, of course. So, what, what do your friends uh, tell you when you tell them that you're working in Luxor and you're living there for, for a long time, what do they tell they, you? They say, they say, I'm a very lucky person. Uh -huh. You know why? I think first of all, it's because of the sun. Uh, yeah. Because I think everybody today <laughs> wants to have a, you know, a place where, where it's sunny and where you have the light to view. And then, of course, when they come and have a look at all the cultural and uh, 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 heritage which is available here in Luxor, in one place, yeah. And I think it's, you know, and this makes Luxor like a destination, for example, like Rome mm -hmm. or Paris. It's a destination where you must have visited once in your lifetime. Yeah. So it's a once in a lifetime destination. Mm -hmm. So if you look at all of it here, it's, um, 
Today we call it also, you know, when you speak to, to the people in Upper Egypt, we, we call it, it's the biggest open air museum yes. in the world. In the world, yes, exactly. So there's no other place in the world where you have more, where you have more culture and heritage in one place. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you tried uh, any visiting other places in, around Egypt like Red Sea, uh, you know, I mean, I've been, Ghana. of course, I mean, ah. I've been to Ghana, I've been to Sharm el Sheikh, I've been to Masala. Oh yeah, I've been to Cairo as well. Uh -huh. But you know what? What I'm saying about Ugarda and Sharm, if somebody asks me today, what is your preferred place? Mm -hmm. I would always say Luxor. Luxor. Cairo, there's too much traffic. Yeah. Of course, they have the pyramids, but there's too much traffic. Mm. Uh, if you look at Ugarda, Sharm, and Masala. I think they're very nice areas because you have the Red Sea. Yes. So in Marsalam, so in Marsalam, for example, you know, I'm not a diver, but I was able to swim with dolphins. Uh, oh, which is that. which is something, uh, you know, uh, unbelievable. It's, it's yeah. a one in a lifetime uh, experience as well. You know, yes. so because it's the most intelligent animal in the world, and you yeah. can swim with them. You know, and um, but on the other hand, what? Tell me about your feelings at that moment. Unbelievable! You you jump you from the alone, boat. No, no, I was friends. with my family, with my daughter, my son, and ah, my wife. Ah. So we jumped into the water, yeah. and suddenly there were 15 dolphins around us. 15 dolphins, man! Yeah. And and you look at uh, a little bit in the beginning. You say, well, that's a really big fish. Like that the... is a really big fish. So <laughs> I might hope you know, he's not going to bite us. But they're very, you know, they are very um, friendly. Yeah, gentle and gem gentle. Gentle and you can is a nice word. Yeah. They're really gentle animals, you know. So. And I've actually learned, uh, you know, recently I actually learned that the, the dolphin is the only animal or the only human being in the world using more than 20% of his brain capacity. Oh. oh. Can you believe it? I mean, it's unbelievable. Oh, so, yeah. um, so this was a unique experience. I mean, your this is something. Your son, I mean, how, how, how? I mean, as I told you, I think it's an absolute unique experience, you know. And, yeah. uh, and it, you know, I think it frees something in yourself. You know, I think yeah. something happens. You know, yes. when when you have an experience like this. Yes. You know, but yes. but if, if you look at you know Red Sea, uh, there's the sea. So if you're not into diving, I think Ugala and Sham. You can go it's safari. A bit boring, you can, yeah, you can I, go safari. But you, you know, do night life. from the cultural point of view, and, uh, yeah, there's okay. nothing. Okay. So, yes. but you're right. If you're into uh, you know safari, uh, night life, night life, etc. So yeah. sometimes because nightlife in Luxor. Yeah, it's, uh, we miss nightlife, but it's left okay. Left behind, left <laughs> behind the culture. So when we need to go for a lifetime, you know, we, we, we you know we go over the weekend. We go to a gallery with some friends and uh, yes. return on Monday, you know, <laughs> or on Sunday, you know. So, so okay, so. okay. So if I ask you to write an email to your German fellows, people around the world, to come and visit Luxor. What can you tell them? You know, I think we... You we, talk to them you know, directly. I mean, at the, at the end of the day is, uh, you know, how would I start? I would say, Mystic Nile. I think I would not even write phrases. I would just say, Mystic Nile. I would say it's a, it's a birth base of every modern civilization we know today. Um, I would say, Sun, guaranteed. I would say great food and service. And I would say that within a week, you can see more in Luxor than you can see in any other part of the world. That's catching. I think this is the way I would put it forward. That's catching. And if you have more questions, then give me a call <laughs> and I explain it and one explain last. it to them in details. You know, no, so. one last, one last uh, word. Thing. Go ahead. Uh, do you draw pictures or do you have any artistic skills? Play piano? I mean, I, I really believe, I mean, I guess, you know, when I was young, I, I played saxophone and piano and, and this kind of stuff. Okay. So, but if you ask me not to paint a picture yes, about Luxor. You got me. No, uh, no, not about Luxor. I was going to, I'll take a broader uh, scale. I would talk about Egypt. If you try to draw a picture of Egypt and send it to the world, how you know, I really would, I think I would just put a big yellow sun on a, on a piece of paper because the sun says it all. Mm -hmm. There is, um, it's bright. I mean, the future for Egypt will be bright. Question is, 
so how long so the future, future will be. But, but I mean, every development we see today, for example, uh, you know, we work a lot with young children. We support a lot of young children, etc. And, and, and we can see today young children will be the ones who are going to carry this country forward. You know, so, and it's bright because they understood. You, you know, tell they me come. about the project uh, that yes, you, we, you know, for example, on, on we work on the West Bank and on the East Bank, we work with orphanages together. Mm -hmm. And so we renovate the orphanages. Right. Um, we, we, you know, we, we supply um, help and assistance. You know, we, for example, sometimes we bring the, the older kids and we do with them three months training in the hotel. So they have, a, they have an opportunity afterwards, you know, to A, to find their passion, for a certain way of development, or even they actually start working with us, you know. So, uh, oh, that's and, great. And, and, and this is really for us extremely important to to support local community because, you know, what we try to do, me as a person, you know, I'm a I'm a person who loves people, so you have to have a passion for people. But but I think what we always should do is, uh, there's a saying, if you give a fish to yeah. a man. You feed him for one day. One day, yeah. If you teach him how to fish, yes. you will feed him forever. That's a Chinese and I think, saying. Uh, exactly, I think. exactly. Yes, yes. And I think this is not only about food, but I think it has also to do with open mind, uh, see a different horizon. Um, you, you know, make sure you understand where you want to be yourself in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Great. If you and go back to the picture, we'll draw. You will draw only sun in the picture. Yes. Because I, I think the sun says it all. So I think the sun, the sun says it all. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's yellow. It's, uh, yellow is a positive color. Uh, sun means light. I mean, the, I mean, we can interpret it now. Light means bright, mm -hmm. brighter future. Okay. Um, uh, and, um, and I think it also shows the cycle of life. The sun. Oh, yeah. You know, it shows because also the cycle of life. It goes you know? up and, and then yeah. takes so, the time and then goes down. You know what I mean? So, and yeah. I really believe the sun is what Egypt stands for. So, I guess it's time now we look to this. Yeah, look at this. The sun and this horizon up there. And this is where we are going to be. And this is where we are going to be. <laughs> Oh, gee. 